And thank you very much for having me. Um, I guess we'll get the slides up shortly. So for those of us who don't know us, um, um, I, we're about a year old, so we just uh, celebrated our one-year anniversary of our IPO uh, just a couple days ago. Um, so I guess for a, a junior mining company, that's still pretty fresh. Uh, we've managed to keep a pretty tight share structure. We um, uh, IPO'd, um, raised $4 million on the IPO, and then raised another $12.5 million this February uh, with resource capital funds being the lead on that. Um, so you can see our share structure on, on the right there and the, the ownership percentage. Um, you know, a group like Resource Capital doesn't take their due diligence lightly. Uh, the fact that they came in for such a big position, which which the only real possible exit for them is a exit for the company or construction, uh, is a big vote of confidence. Um, and you know, they like the project because uh, of that resource update we put out in January. So you can see it there and, and take a look at where the project is. Uh, so 12.5 million tons uh, indicated and 39.5 million inferred um, at both around 10% zinc equivalent. That is a pretty substantial uh, zinc project. Um, a bit of a comparison. So this, this is uh, the, the global uh, global list of projects that are bigger than 50 million tons and greater than 7% zinc equivalent. Um, that our Macmillan Pass project is on the lower end of that scale um, still tells you that we're a very elite company. Uh, the only other asset on this list that's owned by a junior is uh, the Taylor deposit owned by uh, Arizona Mining, um, which has a $1.3 billion market cap to our 60. Um, so it gives you a sense of the, the elite company that, that you join when you have an asset this large uh, with that sort of grade. And so we were quite happy to just uh, uh, a week and a bit ago put out our, our um, initial PEA. Um, you know, when we launched the company and we did an IPO, we said we were going to do some drilling, we were going to update the resource, and we were going to release a PEA. We understood the skepticism around uh, the location of the project. Uh, it is remote, um, and we had always maintained that the skeptics were half right, that, that the cost to get the concentrate to port is hefty. Uh, but the project has uh, enough size and grade that you have the margin to eat that and still have very robust economics. So on the back of 400 million Canadian CapEx, uh, you see an after-tax MPV of 450 million and an after-tax uh, IRR of, of 24%, uh, and a total mine life of 18 years uh, we've established. Um, so this is a multi-cycle uh, zinc asset. Um, and you know, being multi-cycle insulates you from the cyclicality of zinc, which is which is particularly brutal amongst base metals. Uh, someone looking to build a project that has a five-year mine life has to be very careful about when they exactly they build it. When you have an 18-year mine life, you know you're going to see through you know the project through at least two good periods, and so you know you're going to be able to recoup your investment and then some. Uh, so just uh, uh, the base case prices we used there, that was a formula. We don't believe we're metal analysts, and we don't think anyone can predict the average zinc price from. I don't know, 2023 to 2040, which is roughly the, the operation period you might look at here. Um, so we did, we simply priced it on three years back, two years forward uh, at the close of the month before the PEA was released. Um, but obviously at today's, or, or the spot prices at the end of April, um, the economics are even more impressive. So the mine plan starts with a three-year uh, open pit that transitions into um, uh, 16 years of underground in the third year. Uh, in the first seven years of the mine life, it averages about 100,000 tons of zinc contained in concentrate uh, shipped. To give you an idea, that would put this at, I think, the 16th largest zinc mine in the world during that period. And over life of mine, averages 85,000 tons of zinc in concentrate uh, shipped, uh, which is still top 20. Um, so a, a project with that production profile over such a long period obviously is a very unique thing. Um, and we're very... Uh, you know, we're aware that we're, we've got a bit of a tiger by the tail here. And as a junior company, of course, it's thrilling to have an asset that, that looks as good. Um, but we certainly see the sharks uh, circling us as well. Um, you know, we, when, when we decided to do the PEA and when we wanted to look at, you know, how do we exactly optimize this, one of the things we looked at is for the pits, um, in the absence of data to the contrary, we assumed that 100% of the waste rock was acid generating and uh, such, so we limited the pit sizes uh, so that 100% of the waste rock on the adjacent deposit or adjacent pit was able to use back as backfill and then put underground so there was no legacy uh, closure costs on that and 50% uh, of the, the waste rock at the TOM deposit was able to be used for backfill. Um, and that's an important thing, like look, could I have gotten slightly juicier economics if I had changed the pit sizes? Sure, um, 
would it have been a perhaps more challenging project to permit that way? Yeah, and I think so you have to be realistic about um, not just what gives you the best economics, but, but what is actually the most buildable and what is what a community and, and government can most easily wrap their heads around. So uh, in terms of operating costs, um, you know, we're as a largely underground mine in a remote location, we were never going to be lower quartile. But you see our, you know, both byproduct and co-product costs there of zinc are, are right in the mix, that, you know, right in the middle of the sort of cost curve for, for zinc. Um, which is critical because you need to make sure that if, if you're one of the marginal producers, uh, you're going to have a real hard time staying open during the downturns in, in the zinc market. But, but we see that we'll be pretty much in the mix and, and, and be able to keep things uh, going. And, you know, to the skeptics, you see the, um, oops, uh, the, uh, sorry, I, was, I thought I was pointing a laser there. Um, <laughs> you see the uh, transport to, to smelter, so at $212 Canadian per wet metric ton to get it from site. Uh, to smelter is definitely significant. Uh, over half of that is trucking. Um, to give you a scale of what the cost of that is, uh, life of mine over 18 years, that's $450 million spent on trucking. Um, so it is a material expense. And, and so people who are concerned about the logistics and what that meant, like I said, they were not wrong. It was just the project was big enough and high enough grade that you have that margin to, to eat that. Um, our metallurgy, you know, uh, deposits like this, these, these uh, SEDEX deposits, are classically very fine uh, regrind. We do see a pretty fine regrind here, but not, you know, not like a, 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 a century-style regrind, which was uh, down to seven microns at, at points. Um, but most importantly for the metallurgy, we see a, a, an appealing high-grade concentrate that has low iron in the, uh, the zinc con, which is very important in terms of residuals. We expect, a, on average, a modest penalty on uh, mercury and potentially a, a small penalty on silica, depending on how that's managed. Um, but overall, our discussions with smelters in, in Asia and elsewhere have been extremely positive. You know, when we put out our, our metallurgical results, uh, we included an appendix, which included a list of all the penalty elements and, and what our assays were in the, the metallurgical tests. Uh, not a lot of juniors do that. Not a lot of them are willing to be that forthcoming. Um, because our first conversation, you know, the first thing that happens when you go in and you talk to a smelter, they want to see those things. So we just thought we would, we would, uh, you know, show that right away. And I think that that speaks to uh, how our group operates in terms of not not being shy about the the realities of a project. Um, and so, uh, in terms of the price scenario analysis, I want to do this quickly. But lower right corner, in, in terms of a low price uh, scenario, look, you're not going to build a project at an after tax IRR of ten percent. But the key thing is, is that in the low price scenario, in the bottom parts of the cycle, uh, you can keep the lights on, and that's the important thing. It, it, it's not that um, you know you you would price that as your base case, but rather that you want to make sure you can survive that. Um, and in terms of opportunities for improvement, uh, the Yukon government, along with the federal government, uh, that's uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and Premier Silver there, Silver there in 2016 in Yukon, who announced 360 million for for funding for roads to resource projects. For our PEA, we included uh, uh, the entire cost of the, the road upgrade, the government road upgrade to our project at $105 million. So that would cost was borne entirely by us in our, in our PEA. Uh, we maintain that the government will, uh, will step up to commit to most, if not all, of that. And we've had very productive conversations in that regards. Um, in terms of the, the resource, as substantial as it already is, we see ample opportunity to step out uh, and hit uh, um, more mineralization. Uh, every single zone in the deposit, uh, the two deposits are open for expansion. Uh, for example, on the Jason side, uh, it's two sides of an unconnected syncline, so it's open at depth as well as a long strike. Uh, you know, you see intersections like 14 meters of 7% zinc, 5% lead, and 120 grams silver, and that's outside our resource. Uh, that's a peripheral, unimportant intersection for us, uh, and that would be something that a lot of juniors would delight in having. And we've assembled 470 uh, square kilometers of land, which we believe is perspective for, for additional discoveries. Both the Tom and Jason deposits outcrop and were relatively easy to find. Uh, we understand that the rest of the deposits in this area are probably likely going to be buried and require a little bit more advanced science, um, but we feel like we're up for the task. And that's it. Thank you very much.